Back with the Talent Principle, I'm still Dark Lord Kaiser. And sod that level. Sod it sideways. Oh, did you? Are you doing a beep boop again? You weren't beep booping before. That's new. Or did I not? Oh, it's this thing. That uh, certification program that doesn't seem to think I'm a person. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, it's actually select an answer. Would you like to take a few minutes to be sure? Use a satisfaction survey. Yeah, sure. Why not? Loading survey. Based on analysis of your behaviour since, I think you were dissatisfied with the results of the certification program. How would you rate accuracy's results out of five? Spoil the survey. Um. So, good, poor, in between, or screw the rules. I don't um, I'm going to go with very poor, because I'm a person, damn it. Sorry to hear about that. What best describes the reason for your investment in the certification program's outcome? Why does being a person matter to you? Let's see, I want to... Network access! <laughs> Persons matter in ways others don't. Wait, we're having a conversation now. It's the truth. I want to find out if I am one. So, okay, we'll just give up. Oh, okay, so this is the... This is the crux of the question now, isn't it? Why does being a person matter? Oh. Sorry, I just realised I hadn't started my uh, stopwatch. This. So, do we want it for practicalities of, I want to do a thing, you're not letting me do the thing. If I'm a person, I can do the thing, so let me be a person. Is it the fact that I am a person, so it's, that's true and the truth is what's the matter? Is it that being a person is just naturally better than being anything else and I want the best for myself? Or is it exploration? I I want to know if I'm a person. And apparently I trust Milton to make that decision. I think it's fair to say that I am a person. That's kind of the whole crux of the game. Uh, we're having a conversation now. I'm tempted to go with that option, but I don't think that would... Uh, actually progress anything. It's the truth, to be honest. I'm a, I'll try to remember that. In fact, I'm going to help you. This is what I'm here for. Your problem, if I may, is that you don't know the first thing about anything, including what a person is. Your prospects are therefore poor. Do you even know where you are? A virtual reality theme park, the end of the world, a fever dream, hell, some mad experiment, could be anywhere. Let's see. Well, it's certainly... Virtual reality, not really a theme park. The world has ended, but we have no connection to that world. We are, if anything, this is the genesis of a new world. A fever dream, I'm a robot, I don't get fevers. Hell! Well, it doesn't seem particularly hell-like to me. It's just uh, some mad experiment seems to be the uh, best, well, the most accurate option, since we are a pursuer of truth. Oh dear, no. I think we'd best start from scratch. What do you know? Well, that's the eternal question. Uh, we could go with uh, the Descartes theory. I think, therefore, I am. Thus, since I can think, I know I must exist. Uh, do we go by the... Ooh, was it Socrates? The only thing I know is that I know nothing. So, I know none of this is real, thus... I know that 2 plus 2 equals 4, so we start from a, a mathematical standpoint. That, uh, you know, all the fundamentals of the universe are seemingly built on. I know I'm not on Earth. I don't know where you've got that conclusion from, mate. This could very well be Earth. Uh, just because it's virtual reality doesn't mean it's not based on Earth. I know what century this is. No, you don't. <laughs> Any amount of time could have passed from when these are... Uh, programs were written. I know you exist. No, no we don't. Again, this is all a virtual reality. <laughs> the thing we can be most sure of is that this decidedly does not exist. I'm gonna go with... 
day cart, I think. And I, I suppose so. Even if you were dreaming, you could be certain of that. If I were you, I wouldn't believe a darn thing in this place aside from that solitary fact. Thinking. On reflection, it seems to me that we are no closer to resolving your problem. Perhaps we need more data. What makes you think you're a person? I'm alive, I feel, I'm conscious. I'm this conversation with you. The same thing that makes you think you are. Well, that's assuming that they think they are. From uh, my recollection of the Milton Library Assistant earlier, it was just a, a user interface designed to be um, accessible. I don't think, well, maybe it's the old Turing test thing. Perhaps it's past that, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is a person. It just means that it can convince other people. Yeah. I don't see how I can convince you. I see these are the sort of two parts of, uh, I said, the Descartes problem. So I know I exist. I, I can feel things. That's a very descriptive <laughs> term, I know. But uh, but also, it's in completely impossible to look at any. Well, from a, a heavily skepticist, skepticist, skeptical. Uh, standpoint, it's not only impossible to prove anything outside of the fact that we exist. Any uh, any out external or seemingly external stimuli could be a production of uh, our own minds, such as uh, a dream, for example. Mm. Unless you're capable of lucid dreaming, which I s certainly am not, much to my uh, displeasure. I don't think that's um, then you very rarely are aware of the fact that you are dreaming, and once you are in a dream, typically things feel and sound and smell how they would, were they real. So it's, it's possible for the mind to, trigger, even when we're awake, to, to be convinced that you, you left your keys on the table only to find them in your pocket ten minutes later. Even our memories are a, a subject to our own misunderstandings. So I'm going to go with, I don't see how I can convince you. Sensible response. I agree with you. See, Milton knows where it's at. He knows. I don't know how that sentence is going to write. Never mind. Okay. The problem with people, if I may be, if I may be so bold, is that you're all convinced you're people from the inside. There's no iron cast way to confirm as much from the outside. I'm going to process this and send you a notification when I'm able to assist you further. Okay. So we read all of these before, but. Uh, yeah, we seem to be getting somewhere with uh, with old Milton. He seems to be getting closer to accepting that uh, that we might be a person, and thus the uh, are allowed computer privileges. I think we may have got a bit backwards into what our priority should be over here. I mean, it's not. We're not trying to escape at this point. We're exploring and asking very nicely if the computer would kindly let us use the computer. Okay, mobile minefield. Righty ho. Um, righty, so I'm thinking I'm going to trap you behind that door. Do, 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 do. You're just sat there. I need to open these. There is a key. Yeah, path exploding friend. Jammer. That's what we are after. So. My guess. And this is purely a guess at this point, as I haven't explored the. Uh, the area fully, is that as I go around I'm going to be moving the mines around to allow myself access to newer areas, but I need to do so in such a way that I can reopen all ones? I don't know, let's find out. First things first, bugger off. Bloody friend, dealt with. Alright, okay, open these, get keys. Keys allow us to access the door. Alright. Okay, I'm seeing a wire. Previously, that has meant that somewhere is a switch I can go and press. There's a switch. 
That should have powered that down. If not, I'm about to take a face full of shrapnel. That would be good. Moving along. Don't you beep at me, damn it. You don't have a wire coming off you, so it would seem that. Okay. Done. Considering how irritatingly difficult the previous level felt, so sort of that kind of anticlimactic, I could just walk through that one almost by accident. Oh ah, well. This will turn out to be the one where there's a secret star in it that I can't be asked to go finding. Oh, right ho. Let's see. Oh no, I have the secret star. Cool, this level's done. Look at this, I'm out. Have a little sip of me drinky. Have we even been in Area 7 yet? I don't think I have, have I? Alright, let's go into Area 7. May as well finish everything off in here. Nope, and it's doing a beat. I have promised you eternal life. Yeah, and I keep but pointing out I'm a robot, I don't need it. But may only be attained by those who serve a purpose greater than themselves. All else is decay. So it was written in the hidden words before the beginning of time. Okay, smart ass. Except, a purpose greater than themselves doesn't necessarily mean you, does it, Elohim? I mean, escaping this place and trying to rebuild a civilization could be quite easily argued to be a purpose greater than myself. And even if my uh, robot body and artificially intelligent mind should decay, the civilization that I create is, in some interpretations, a form of immortality. It's a house! When I was in ninth grade, my parents took me to Pompeii. At first, I was amazed by the feeling of walking through an ancient city. But then I suddenly got scared. I realized that I was walking through a real place where real people had lived. People like myself, with mothers and fathers and lives and hopes and dreams. And now it was all gone forever. I ran to my father, crying, and told him about this. And he said, I remember so clearly, he said, yes. But we are here. So long as there are people in the streets, the past isn't really gone. An interesting uh, conclusion to reach from that. Though, as a child, you seem to have uh, spent an awful lot of time considering your own mortality. Which, you know, I know everyone does at some point, it just... Seems to be a reoccurring theme with you. Athena number nine. You have the symbol on the fragment you'd found in the buried city. Again, the owl. What could its significance be? It seems as if it's scattered about in the labyrinth by some unseen hand for a purpose that let a you loop. But those are words yet eluded. Most likely, the owl was the sigil of the author of these words, which had so. RFG. A nebulous memory, as if from a previous life. Al was the symbol of blank, and the goddess blank. Well, Al being the symbol of the goddess Athena, I don't know why they bothered to hide that one. Never mind. Outside, under the moon, or perhaps on the city walls when the wind rose. There was no time to contemplate this further now, for the auto automatons? Yeah, automatons. <laughs> for some reason my brain read that as automatons, and that's not how you pronounce it. Automatons had seen her. And the mechanical arm extended towards blank, the fragment, and ran as their beams converged on blank. I, I legitimately do not understand the purpose of these Athena texts at this point. They're either so staggeringly obvious as someone standing there going, hmm, I wonder what the purpose of all these puzzles are, or are just, hmm, this thing has an owl on it. Great, thanks. Singularity discussion. Singularity is coming. You know, the more I think about it, the more I believe that no one is actually worried about AIs taking over the world or anything like that, no matter what they say. What they're really worried about is that someone might prove, once and for all, that consciousness can arise from matter. I understand... Oh, and I kind of understand why they find it so terrifying. If we can create a sentient being, where does that leave the soul? Without mystery, how can we see ourselves as anything other than machines? And if we are machines, what hope do we have that death is not the end? 
what really scares people is not the artificial intelligence in the computer, but the natural intelligence they see in the mirror. Show next comments. Well, you won't. You can't show me next comments, that can you? This is comment 104, according to the top thing, and you ain't shown me any others. But, uh, yeah, they, they keep calling back to this uh, people as biological machines rather than as, you know, uh, creatures with a soul. It's very much, um, I think it's metaphysics, that uh, the concept. It's certainly a, um, a metaphysical issue of the problem of duality in which if the soul is ethereal and the body is physical, how do the two interact with each other? Um, some interpretations have that the mind, that the sorry, the soul doesn't affect the body per se so much as. So let's say I want to take this drink that I have to have in front of me, which I'll have a tip of. So, one interpretation that uh, springs to mind, not one I particularly believe in, just one that uh, that pops into my head for various reasons, is that the soul thinks I want to make the body move and the body moves, but it hasn't actually caused that thing. The body was going to move anyway. It's very much a, um, um, I think it's sort of like a will of God kind of argument that the the, my, the the soul says, I want X to happen, and it just coincidentally happens that at the same time, X happens. It's almost a, um, a Hume problem of uh, induction. Anyway, not really important. More gibberish that I probably could have done some other time. Anyway, as one of the founders of the modern science of pneumatics, many credit you with inventing the term itself. How do you see the state of science today? Sorry, I said science twice. Uh, Nadia Sarabai. I still can't pronounce that word, so I apologise for anyone who knows how that gets pronounced. Mixed. Uh, sorry, I'll do it. Nadia, mix. On the one hand, the existence of the Institute for Applied Pneumatics and a couple of similar organizations is highly encouraging. On the other hand, the degree to which science is seen as serving purely military or corporate causes is, in my opinion, stopping us from exploring many important avenues of research. In a sense, it's people like Alexander Drennan. Sorry, like, yeah, Alexandra. I thought it was Alexander. No. Alexandra Drennan who are the real pioneers today, who have the enthusiasm and dedication that the system as a whole seems to be lacking. Do you think technology poses a danger to humanity? Navia. No, technology is just a tool. What we do with it is up to us. The extended lifespan project. Crazy or visionary? Both. Crazy or visionary? Both. Okay, thank you. Do you? That's... That's letters. Okay, to Alan, subject, scenario. So far, all the puzzles are solvable, and completely within the necessary parameters. Alexandra has some more tweaks she wants to suggest, but I think we're heading in the right direction here. Nope, oh, something's froze. Okay, recording. Yep, still recording. Good. <laughs> they haven't had a recording freeze in a while, so I was hoping uh, that hasn't completely bugged me, but we'll see. Right, let's go to... This one, he says, picking one at random. We've got about five minutes left. Let's uh, see if we can get one more done. Windows into a labyrinth. Okay. There's a laser. There was a portal. Here are some windows. And here's a beam. Uh, beam split out of it. Tripod. So, bam. Bam. Well, gotta start somewhere. Bam. So this door. Okay, I think I see where this puzzle is gonna start going. I haven't seen any QR codes for a while. Though I haven't explored this place much, so I suspect it's only a matter of time before I. Uh, Dumbbell across them. Jammer over there. That's going to be useful. Let's get there. So I think that's going to be the problem with this uh, 
this puzzle. It's a little labyrinthian. Okay, that's where I need to get to in the end. So what's the next stage of going there? Next stage of going there will be through here. I sincerely doubt that is the solution to this particular problem. I just want to uh, explore the puzzle first so that I can then work on getting the There's another splitter over there, so that might be my next port of call. Okay. Get to wall. Okay, let's uh Let's start simple. I jam there to take this. And let's set it up here. So I'm thinking if it's here I can see it all the way sort of down there which with this jammer where it is. Walk into a wall, fair enough. Over here. Get there for a minute. Can I use... Okay, take the jammer back. Don't just go back through there anymore. There, so take this through here. And now I have access to this. Laser do. Having access to the laser, we do gives me access to the second tripod. Having access to the second tripod. I have a plan. So uh, having access to this tripod means I can get through this door here, but I can see there are more things down there. So if I do this. I can take my jammer through here, jam this from the inside, take this back. Taking this back to here, take my jammer through here. Jam. Jiggly pokery me thinks. Okay. Taking connector. I'll connect that straight to that source. Take this. Take this through here. I can connect through this one. Which means I can get through here, jam that, get the square, open the secret door, bam! Yeah, that uh, went surprisingly smoothly. I could imagine, I could easily have seen that uh, tripping me up a few times trying to figure out how to get around. Okay, I'm going to stand in this pond for no particular reason other than I want to, and I will call that an episode. Alright, bye.